Mm, what's up guys okay so in this video i'm going to talk about when should you run dynamic creative ads so if you don't know what dynamic creative ads are let me explain the in the most simplest term i can right so a dynamic ad is and this really fucked me up because I just couldn't wrap my head around it when I first started with this stuff. I was like, what, what the fuck does dynamic mean? What is what does this mean? And so as time progressed, I started to understand. I started operating off Facebook and then operating on Google. And they also have dynamic creative too. And so one of the um the, the one of the things I can say that's really good about Google is when you're running Google ads, they have reps that actually call you. You can actually call in to their uh to their advertising line and get help and get explanations. Oh shit. Even though people may be in India or Philippines or wherever they are, they're definitely not American, but they're still smart and when you get to a certain level, boom, you can get some questions answered. You're not talking to a fucking chat box. So maybe at some point um Facebook a I, I will tell you this though when you start advertising at a certain level Facebook will give you a call and try to you know get you to spend more money uh, welcome guys yeah I hear you it is. but that's neither here there dynamic creative ads what are they right so dynamic creative ads are, are when you are able to uh, have multiple creatives right multiple um, headlines, multiple descriptions, loaded up, ready to go. And after you you know do all your common sense targeting and stuff like that and hit publish, then the what will happen is once that ad is running, you might have creative, you might have creative A, B, C, D, right? Headline A, B, C, D, and then description, uh, the text uh, A B C D text right so follow me so dynamic creative would be um, say the ad pops up in front of somebody and it might mix creative A with headline C and text B that's one then the next time that that next person might get uh, saying another impression from you as the advertiser and then they might get you know headline they might get image or creative D with headline C and uh, text B you know that kind of thing so dynamic means that it has the, that when you load up all that content creative headlines descriptions and primary text you give Facebook the ability or the power or the freedom to, which I don't like any of that shit. I don't like giving them the power and freedom to do anything except for putting the right people in front of my message after I select my audience. But you give them the freedom and the opportunity to mix all that shit up and put the right combination in front or hopefully put the right combination in front of that person at the right time now do i would i say run dynamic creative i would say yes run dynamic creative if you have uh, if you're thinking about the audience that you're targeting right and it's um one ad group and you know one interest let's just take shoes for example you got one you know your interest for this group is let's just say this ad group this is an adidas campaign you want to push adidas but you also have nikes and other shoes on your uh on your on your website and you run this one campaign you're running this uh, adidas campaign to to your website um that has multiple tennis shoes on it 
And so when you set up your ad, you have your detailed targeting set up your interests, right? You have your interests. You got you put in people who like Adidas, people who like Nike, people who like uh, Reeboks. So you can put three different interests in an Adidas campaign, but then all your creative is Adidas, all your headlines are, you know, D Adidas related, and then all your primary text is Adidas related. But your interests are misaligned because you, not only do you have Adidas in there, you also have Nikes, Reeboks, along with some additional brands of tennis shoes in there because you think that that's what people in you know people who are shopping for shoes or people who might be interested in shoes that's you think that's that, that's what they should see but what happens is when you do dynamic creative and then your detailed targeting is off then now you're going to be putting multiple messages uh, a combination of of different messages and creative in front of the wrong person and that is not what you want to happen. So if you have a very low budget, right, then don't run dynamic creative ads. Um, one reason is because there's going to be too many. I mean, it's going to run, right? It's going to you're going to have dynamic creative ads. It's going to like I said. You're going to have like each creative may cost different. They're all not going to cost the same. You know, uh, creative one might cost you 32 cents. Creative B might show up in front of the uh, a, a Nike person and cost you a dollar and 80 cents. Whereas creative three might show up in front of Adidas audience and cost you 88 cents. So, you know, depending if you depending on what your interests are, your detailed targeting, how you have that set up these different pieces of dynamic creative that's meant for one product or one type of person is going to cost start costing you way more money than you can anticipate and that you can afford and it's going to uh, spend your daily budget a lot faster and you're not going to see the results you want and then you're not going to believe in this strategy um, two there's going to be too many variables to chase and you're not going to know which ones actually worked and you're not going to know which variable to actually tweak. So if you have all these different combinations going, you got creative A mixing up with the primary text in, you know, uh, C and then a different headline and it gets you a bunch of conversions. And then the other and then a whole different uh, variation of combinations is taking place and it's costing you. You know, it's getting you a bunch of clicks, but not getting you any conversions like, you know, like, what do you do? Right. Like, it's hard to track unless you have specific software in place. And that is well beyond my level of intelligence. If I have to start plugging in software here and there to understand uh, this split test, you know, all this other shit, I just keep it simple and I don't even do it. I, the and when I split test the most I might split test is maybe two headlines and one piece of creative. I split test the text first, go through that, see what's creating, and then I split test my creative and by itself with the winning with the highest CTR text. And that's how and that doesn't come I don't figure that out until you know three, four campaigns down the line. You know, and that's something that a lot of people don't tell you. You know, you gotta when you split testing, you got to take your time. It's not something you find out overnight. You got to spend a little money to get some data and find out what it is you're trying to accomplish. And that's the exact same thing with dynamic creative. You're split testing so many different variables. For every piece of creative, you're split testing a headline. You're split testing primary text. Man, that compounds, man. That, that's, you know, five create pieces of creative, five headlines, five primary pieces of text that's that's 15 pieces right there and then you uh multiply that boom mind blown that's like over 100 different variables 100 different combinations taking place and ain't nobody got time for this shit so i would say do not run dynamic creative if you don't have the capabilities resources to actually figure out 
or the time or the analytic know-how to find out what's working and what's not working from a variable standpoint. And if you don't have the money to, you know, play that ball game, don't do it. Um, but I will say do it if 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 your targeting is is proper. Back to the Adidas, the the shoe campaign. If you're running the Adidas campaign, right? Adidas say you say you're doing Adidas Adidas Boost campaign. Right, not any particular type of boost, but Adidas Boost campaign, and although on your website you have various types of shoes on your website, and you could be running a, a site-wide sale on your this, and mind you, this can apply to anything. You could be running a site-wide sale on your website, but on this website, you you're only targeting the Adidas page. And all the Adidas on that page, at least if they're boosts, you are putting them into the dynamic creative. You got, say you got, you got multiple pair of Adidas, but you have five pair of boosts on your website. Then you're going to have five pieces of creative, five images for the Adidas boosts, five headlines, not stating a certain type of boost, but it has to be make sure this general, you know, talk like softest, comfortable, awesome shoe, that type of thing, athletic shoe. And then you want your text to be general as well so that if it does swap out with a different piece of creative, then it all makes sense and it's in alignment. And then when you do your detailed targeting, you want to make sure that the detailed targeting is towards a person who likes Adidas, period. And then now, if somebody who likes Adidas is looking at your uh, your ad and they're getting an impression from you, then they'll decide whether or not as they click through the dynamic, you know, the different types of creative, as they click through that, if they see that blue Adidas boost or some type of custom Adidas boost or anything that catches their eye within that creative, that dynamic creative ad, boom, they're interested. They go over to your website. And even though they may they may or may not purchase something, still, you can retarget them now with different types of Adidas if they didn't purchase the Adidas boost. So that's how you run that campaign. You don't muffle your... Um, your interest or your targeting too much when you run dynamic creative ads. You kind of keep that as simple as you possibly can. So don't let anybody tell you that these don't work because they do work. You just have to, like I said, use your uh, information that you have about who it is you're targeting and then also plan your creative, plan your messaging, and then appropriate that with the right with the right interest. And if you're doing that and then make sure your, your website is built to convert. And if you're doing all those things, then you're good to go. And you don't have anything to worry about except for optimizing whatever you get at that point. So it, um, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll talk to you guys soon.